we solve for pedigrees, the first thing we'll do is list all the possible modes of inheritance. We have Y-linked, autosomal recessive, X-recessive, autosomal dominant, and X-linked dominant. Let's start off with Y-linked. Because a female has it, it cannot be Y-linked. Because Y-linked means it's carried on the Y chromosome, and females do not have a Y chromosome. Next, we'll look here with two parents affected, and their child is unaffected. This has to be dominant. If it were recessive, both parents would only have recessive alleles to give to their offspring. Next, we'll check to see if it is X-linked dominant. If it were, we check for affected males, and we know that every affected male has to have all daughters and mother affected. Here we have an affected male. His daughter is not affected, so it cannot be X-linked dominant. Again, the rule is that affected males must have affected daughters. Because it's on their X chromosome, they're going to give that to their daughters. We have now determined that the mode of inheritance for this pedigree is autosomal dominant. This means anyone who's shaded in has a capital A, and anyone not shaded in has two little A's. Both parents in this pedigree have a dominant allele. They must also have a recessive allele in order to give it to their daughter, so they are both heterozygous. The other three males on the pedigree, we do not know their exact genotype because if they get the dominant allele from one parent, they could get the dominant or recessive allele from the other parent. Again, the first thing we do is write down the modes of inheritance and we'll check to see if it's Y-linked. This cannot be Y-linked, again, because a female has it. Next, we'll check to see if two parents that do not have it have a child with it which is the case here, which means it has to be recessive or it is not dominant. If it were dominant, a child with it would have to get it from one of their parents. So we can eliminate autosomal dominant and X-link dominant because they cannot skip generations. Next, we'll check to see if it could be X-linked recessive. The rule with that is that any female with it will get it from her dad and give it to her sons. This is not the case, so it cannot be X-linked recessive. Because affected females must have affected sons. We've just determined that this pedigree is autosomal recessive. This means anyone with the disorder or shaded in will have two little A's. They are the affected individuals. Anyone not shaded in will have at least one capital A because they are unaffected. So let's label the genotypes on the pedigree. Anyone shaded in has two little A's. Anyone not shaded in has at least one big A. Now we know that children in generation two will all have a little A because they get it from their mom. So they'll all be heterozygous. Next, we don't know individual two, four, We do know individuals 3, 1, and 3, 2 because they have kids with the disorder, so they must both carry the allele for that disorder. And the last two individuals on the pedigree, we do not know their genotypes for sure, because if they got a capital A from one parent, they could get either allele from the other parent. Let's take a look at another example. This one is not Y-linked because a female has it. Next we can see that two parents without the trait have a child with the trait, which means it cannot be dominant, it must be recessive. We can now eliminate autosomal dominant and X-linked dominant as possible inheritance modes. Next let's take a look to see if it is X recessive. There's a female with it, but her dad does not have it. Therefore, it cannot be X-linked recessive. As we know, affected females have to have affected fathers because they get one of their X's from their father, and their father only has the one X to give them, so they must have the disorder. We now know that the mode of inheritance for this pedigree must be autosomal recessive. This means 
it is carried on the recessive allele. Any affected individuals or shaded in individuals will have a genotype of two little a's, and anyone not shaded in will have at least one capital A. Let's look at the shaded in individuals. They're all autosomal recessive. That means the two parents must both have a recessive allele to pass on to their offspring. Individual 2-2, two, two, we do not know for sure because if they get the capital A from one parent, then they can get either allele from the other parent. For this pedigree, we know it is not Y-linked because a female has it. Next, we'll look at these two parents that have the trait. They have a child without the trait, so it cannot be recessive because if it were recessive, both parents would only have recessive alleles and therefore all their children would have to have that trait. Next we'll check for X dominant. The rule is any male that has it, his mother and all his daughters have to have it because they get his only X chromosome and it has a dominant allele on it. Here we see his daughter does not have it, so it cannot be X dominant because affected males must have affected daughters. We've just proven that this pedigree is autosomal dominant. Anyone who is shaded in is affected, they have a capital A, and unshaded individuals are unaffected, two little a's. We can see that parents 1, 1 and 1, 2 have children with the recessive genotype. This means that they both must be carriers for the recessive allele. They are both heterozygous. Individual 2, 3 is also heterozygous to give the recessive allele to their daughter. Individual 3, 2 is also heterozygous because she has two children with the recessive trait. The last two children are also heterozygous because they get the lowercase allele from their dad.